<laughs> because you don't already speak fast. <laughs> Just like check marks appearing on. <laughs> Welcome back to the 203 2018 Web Development Feature World Championship Contest 2018. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, we've, we've been looking at web features that have landed in Chrome in 2018 yep. because I went on to all of the uh, new in Chrome posts and ripped them out. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Put them by in, like. <laughs> put them in, yes, thank you, Pete. Uh, put them into a chart here. And uh, we whittled uh, 16 of them down to one. Scroll snap. That's the first finalist. Yeah, that was a spoiler if you haven't watched the other videos. Uh, <laughs> so there's no point it's, watching them now. It sucks to be you. Yeah, well, it sucks to be us because we don't get the views. But <laughs> fair enough. Uh, let's All the way back to the bottom. All the way back to the bottom. We're going to look at some more features. And the first one I want to talk about is WebAuth public key credential. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, this is part of the WebAuth uh, API, okay. uh, the, the, the credential management stuff. Mm -hmm. um, which is an API I've not really looked at. <laughs> and I struggle to find like an example of this. Um, I, I found a demo. I struggled to get the code out of it, which is really bad of me. <laughs> it was and, and But basically, I can describe what the feature is going to do. Ah, uh, a Zufba. Uh, what, what, what's a Zufba? A Zufba. I have no idea what that is. Well, right. I, I'm going to press it. User verifying platform authenticator is not available. That's not even what that. Oh, OK, so the user yeah. verifying platform authenticator. Oh, who knows? That In was exciting, though, wasn't it? <laughs> this is, a bit of, uh, is this like the nubby things, things, maybe? Integrated? No, this is the nubby things. Oh. It's now asking me to insert a security key. Mm. Um, and it can be a Bluetooth one or a USB one. Do you have one? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I tried it earlier, and it it will give you the the key details, like the you know obviously okay. the, the private parts, but not the private parts. Don't say private <laughs> parts. You don't see the private parts. Well, that's As good. It gives you enough details so you can authenticate that user later on. Okay, so basically, way. I can skip. I could allow users to skip all kinds of username slash password thingy magics and just be like, yes, put in your nubby. Put in your nubby. Uh, this is that is that a <laughs> name for those things? Is that I is, didn't know. Is not a brand name? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds sounds horrendous. Um, <laughs> But yes, so you and I've used this with GitHub, uh, being able to use like the oh, that's so convenient. Yeah, I love that. two-factor authentication. They probably don't use that. I don't know because I, I think know. for now it was pretty much Chrome only and had native support for those yes, things. Yes, that that is true. Uh, so yes, that is public or right. public web key credential thing. That's Going like, up against web public key credential thing, thing. is a toggle attribute. Now this code sample, the 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 code that I've written for this is going to mm -hmm. blow you away. OK, here we go. Oh, that's it, is it? <laughs> can, I, can I guess? Yes, go take a wild guess. It's going to toggle that attribute, isn't it? It is. Is <laughs> it brilliant? It, it, so I, OK. It, it's literally a like classless toggle, but for attributes. Right. It also so, has the second Boolean parameter if you wanted to, like toggle on classless does. But most of the time, you just want to toggle a class and then default. But it, this is going to be destructive, though, because if I toggle, because it, it could have a value. It could be hidden equals something. That's actually true. I didn't check that if you can pass a value. No, I don't, I don't think you can. Yeah, I don't think but you can. there you go. So, so cool. That's it. OK, OK. So we'll um, go back we, to the brackets. Back to, back to the brackets. Um, we've got toggle attribute versus. now. Although I really badly sold the public key credential, I'm actually thing. still very excited about the prospect of being able to to access two-factor authentication tokens. It's, uh, it's one of the, the things. Yeah, it's one of those things that uh, credentials payments are, are the things where native apps are so far ahead, uh, yeah. or were. And so having these sort of things, if I, yeah. I can at some point write a web app where people can authenticate with a fingerprint or something, and I don't have to like loop them through. Uh, authentication flow in my back end, but just do it all client side, winning, absolutely winning. Brilliant. There we go. Put it through. OK, let's uh, let's look at our next couple of features. I would like to talk about off screen canvas. Oh, I, mean, I know you're excited about that one. We've already talked about this, haven't we? A it, little bit. I, I think we talked about it on a podcast, but not. Yes, a little bit. And, and, and we maybe about the bitmap renderer as well. The bitmap pre renderer or whatever, uh, or whatever it is. Off screen canvas. There you go. It's like a canvas. But off screen. But off screen. I so mean, and therefore available in a worker. Yeah, exactly. And that's exciting. So you want to do bitmap manipulation in the worker. That's great. Mm. 
you can also uh, proxy it. So you're doing the computation in the worker. You're because uh, this has just got regular canvas now, mm. uh, you know, 2D WebGL. Uh, but you can also sort of transfer it so the they create it on the main thread, send it over to a worker, and all the paint operation the worker does magically appear on. on well, yeah, yeah, the other way around. Yeah, so you, you, your your main thread, a bit of your web page is being updated by the worker essentially, which is, amazing. Which is I, I I do think is amazing. Going up against this is the Focus Management API. Now this is a very oh. fancy word that was mentioned in one of the new in Chrome blog posts with no explanation of. Where what this API is, no code sample, no link to the spec, and I Googled it. It was very hard to find. It turns okay. out it's the focus method. So you might remember you can focus an element. It's been around for a while. It's very old. So what's new about this, it takes a new options object now, which has exactly one option, and that option is prevent scroll. So you can focus an element without scrolling to it. It, it almost feels like calling this the scroll management API is a little. It's. Uh, it's <laughs> Someone wanted to feel legit. That's someone making up their own job title of like you know <laughs> master of development. I own or the focus management API. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's just one option, but but it's useful. Maybe. Yeah. Sure. If you wanted to send focus for like accessibility reasons, especially, and you didn't want it messing around with the scroll position. Yeah, I guess. Feels. I, that probably is use cases. That's why it got standardized. I. Did there not probably is use cases. That's why it got standardized. That's a good. <laughs> yeah. Good way to think about it. Um, I have not run into this myself. And I, it's, I, yeah. I feel like I might have, like, if the, the, the default where the browser will scroll might still be obscured by like a position fixed element. I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, OK. Right. Yeah, OK. Let's stop talking. So um, putting up against each other is off screen canvas versus focus API. <laughs> yeah, it, it's off screen I'm canvas. I'm going to put off screen canvas. Yeah, through. that's not a big discussion right I mean, there. just because just it does so much more, uh, it's something that, uh, well, from a selfish point of view, I've wanted it for, for ages. Although there's a negative point against it, because we tried to use, off-screen off canvas for Squoosh, and there's a bug in Chrome. Yeah, it forces a GPU switch. If you have a laptop yeah. with two GPUs, uh, an integrated one, which is you know not as powerful, but does most of the time, and the discrete one for like high power things, for some yeah. reason, it forces a switch. And that's super janky. Yes. It's it, like a one yes. second pause in the system. Because we were doing, I was doing some uh, rotation of an image. Yeah. And it meant with very little code in a worker, it wouldn't. I was actually rotating big images, so it's taking 300 milliseconds, yeah. even like with the power of the GPU and everything. Um, but that 300 milliseconds, like moving that off the main thread, was just <laughs> destroyed by the one second of operating system jank you get yeah. with a GPU switch. Um, so that's a shame. So as a result of off-screen canvas winning, uh, we now have to decide uh, web off public cre credential API versus off-screen canvas. Off canvas. So what are, are we talking about the oh, current oh, incarnation tough. of off-screen canvas or the projected future of off-screen canvas? Well, so do, do, what do you mean in terms of like is, fix that? Do we incorporate the bug this, this bug, for example? Let's do assume we, the bug is going to get fixed. Yeah, because I think off-screen canvas is massive. Um, um, yes, I, for, me, for me, it would be off-screen canvas. I, I think if we were talking about web off as a whole, not just this yeah. sort of part of web off, I think I'd be putting web off through. But I That's think probably I'm going to put. Yeah, you might have a point. I'm going um, to put. I'm going to agree with you. Yeah, off screen canvas. Canvas. All right, that goes through to uh, the. I think the models. other the other problem is that I don't build apps a lot that have login. Maybe I should change it to get some experience with that. But ah, we've done big web quiz. True, but we used Google. Yeah, login. login. Done. Okay, cool. Okay, fine, fine. Let's look Following. at the next set of features. Uh, I would like to talk to you about sensors. Sensors. Sensors, uh, specifically the generic sensor API. Uh, and that is these things. Which is like an umbrella term for we already had, I think, gyroscope, for example, for a long time now. Yes, it was like an event on the, yeah, some weird thing. On the document or something. I, yeah, motion changed or, or something. Uh, this brings them all together. Uh, That's a lot of sensors, yo. There's a lot of sensors. And these are the ones that are in Chrome now. Uh, but they all have a very similar API uh, in that you get like a reading event out of them. And then the properties of the object has changed, so you'll get the I think the sensor. event name really bugs me. Reading. Yeah, I, do you know what? Because when I first saw that, I thought that meant it, it has begun reading. Yeah, like, and you get like a stream event. in there or something. But you probably get an event every time there's a new I think it's data the, set where you're available to read. I think, I think it's, it's not the verb reading. It's the noun. It's a reading. 
Ooh. Which I, but I would, I would like it to be like a change event, like we have yeah. a lot of. I'm sure there must be a reason why it's not a change event, and I think it's because it's debounced. Maybe it's there now. It's we'll, there. We'll, okay. uh, we'll be, <laughs> it will stick around for forever. So yeah, you get but all these things. These are actually really useful. So that's kind of cool that they're there, especially for like XR, yeah, VR, all these things, all of that sort of stuff. All right, going cool. up against these sensors I, is. I forgot that you might want to do one. <laughs> Bigant. A big a big bigant. A bigant. A bigant. So basically I like bigants. you might have seen them before. Bigant. This is a big int. It's, it's a, a very big integer. That is a big integer. Yeah, because there's a magic N at the end. That's bigger so than numbers I know, like twelve and <laughs> eighty-nine. So because of the N at the end, JavaScript not know. So this is supposed to be a integer and not just a float number, and it can be arbitrarily big. Like oh. Java will always be saving every digit, and you can have multiplication and addition and all these things now working on arbitrarily large numbers. Division? Uh, mm, there's a modulo. There's probably, there's probably integer division. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Oh, OK. Integer division. <laughs> integer division. Right. Also, okay. fun, fun side fact, it is actually a new primitive type. Oh, excellent. Which is the we don't get those very often. No symbol. It's been uh, for, yeah we got symbol. It's probably the most recent addition. Before it was number object function string. And we got big int. Yeah. Uh, okay, excellent. Right. So let's uh, let's talk about them too. Sensors big int. Now these both feel like things that not many developers are going to use. I have run into big integer concerns and chose to ignore them because there was no other way around it. Would you use big int for small ints? W w hear me out. <laughs> <laughs> Realize this sounds stupid, but I'm going to try and rescue it in the next <laughs> sentence. Would you use big int for small ints if you, you did not want floats to happen? Like, for, for instance, that you it, make it, sure it is always integers. So I'm, I'm thinking like if you were doing Money. currency. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, Wouldn't it have been better if we said the same thing? But <laughs> no, we didn't. We, we, can, we couldn't possibly reshoot this and edit no. it in. Let's, let's leave it um, like that. Maybe, actually. Maybe. Okay. Um, but also, I often, with whenever you like talk about certain, I, I wonder if these work in JSON, actually. Uh, like, if you send them down from the server, if JSON parse will actually understand them. Nope. Probably not. The answer is no. <laughs> that, that much I know. Um, but there's often times where I just don't want to worry about if I'm going to overflow. Um, whenever I build certain yeah. libraries generating random UUIDs instead of like distributing integers across an array and then doing operations, I could just build one UUID and then just slice them. And there's many use cases where I see them as being useful. Sensors are more niche to me than yeah, big ins. That's I'm going to admit that they're still big ins are probably kind of niche and not. That's the thing. These are both really niche. Not really. I think sensors are more niche. Except in XR land. Yeah, OK. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah OK. Yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> mostly because I can't make a decision. I'm <laughs> going to I'm gonna let you make the decision. Begin goes through to Begin. the next round. Excellent. Um, next up, here we go. So the Lifecycle API. We did a big oh, episode We did a big this. episode on this one, um, yeah. I mean, do we, I don't even know how much we talk about it again. But it's it's this. It's it, the first time we show code about it, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Actually, it was, so a, yeah, it was a, a podcast it's, one. It's, in a way, it's just new events, but they're really useful. Yes, it, it takes stuff that the mobile browsers already do, discarding tabs, yeah. um, because they you know to save memory. It kind of wraps a spec around it. It also introduces this idea that a page will be frozen, which means that yeah. it's not running anymore, but it, the memory for it still exists, so it can be resumed. Yeah. Uh, so this is if it's discarded, as in it's taken out of memory, and the user revisits the tab, the page is essentially reloaded. But you can detect that that happens. It's something that all native platforms have from like literally version one life cycles mm. of the first thing they build to recycle views to figure out where they go. And the web didn't have it, and now it does. So it's a massive step in actually building something that behaves more like an app and how you expect it. You sold it better than I have. Let's see how you do on one of your own. <laughs> what do I have? Server timings. I didn't oh. know about this and actually found it quite interesting. Okay. So server timings uh, in and of themselves are literally just a new header. Okay. So um, it allows you to put a word in there and say, like, this request missed the cache, for example. You can have multiple um, server timings in a header. So I can, for example, add, like, this request took 2.4 milliseconds to uh, be of, processed. Of CPU time? What was I, I just, it? This is just random names. You can give them your oh. own names. So just names for these different timings. So I said, oh, this I one see. has a flag set to true called missed cache. Okay. The CPU server oh. timing is set to 2.4. If see, I wanted I to, I could even add a description. 
And these are sent along with a response from the server. So you can send your server timings to the client. And over there, you basically use the performance docket entries by resource um, array, which for every resource you've requested on your page, you can now inspect. And in there, you have um, so these, every entry is a resource, and each entry has an array of server timings. And so in there, you have the missed cache flag. You have the CPU thing that I set up there. What would you do with this data? Probably send it to your analytics to tie it to a user and be like, oh, a user on this device um, had problems, but the server was already slow and maybe correlate certain features. Um, so it's, mo it's mostly analytics. Your server sends these things to the client. Yeah. So the client can send well, it the to problem, the server. The pro yes. It sounds a bit weird, but the problem is that often um, when you have load balancers, they make decisions based on, for example, right. the user, user agent. So these timings might differ depending on what the client is. So you want to tie these measurements to the client and ideally to that timing that might emit more measurements on the client side later on. Right, of course, because you, you could take the, the, the client processing uh, performance stuff as well yeah. and tie that into one big analytic that you send. So, so maybe one user has an extraordinary large music collection, and so all the client side becomes slow, but there's no way to tie these two timings together until now. Until now. Fair enough, fair enough. OK, let's, uh, let's discuss these ones then. Still an easy one, I think. Oh, OK. I, I, I'm, I was going to say life cycle. Yeah. Oh, OK. I okay. Um, that's, I that's think good. Um, I know there's many data driven people out there who get super excited about collecting more data. And I'm excited I, for them. And, and statistics are great and everything. But for me, as developer, life cycle is just a big hitter. Agreed. I, I, I'm excited about the sort of stuff we'll learn from server timings. I, I'm excited <clears> that, that hopefully things like Google Analytics will make that not something I have to implement. True. It will just happen. Actually, true. Yeah. Um, uh, although I guess maybe with some of the server stuff I would have to do that, but that's that's not a big deal. But yeah, lifecycle for me it just explains some platform things which have been under spec for so long, yeah. and to finally have them is is a big deal. Um, and now we need to figure out big int versus lifecycle API. Hey, I'm going to go lifecycle. Yeah, again. I agree. It's it's not it's, a big discussion for me. Big int is great, and I love that we have it because all the libraries were super big. But again, it's niche. While lifecycle is literally every app, Agreed. literally every Agreed. app will probably touch this API if you want yep. to do it right. And to be able to, like, especially on mobile, to be able to go back to a tab and have a, a way to, even though the page is closed, it restore reloads. Restore the state. It yeah. restores the state. Yeah, absolutely. And this means we get to decide Ooh. our next now semi-finalist. That, that's that's rough. This is this is a tough one. This is a tough one. <laughs> Off-screen canvas versus lifecycle API. I so, know. So politically. In terms of the overarching, the story arc of the web, yeah, um, it would be lifecycle. For me personally, the things that I do on the web, it would be off-screen canvas. Okay, so this, the, the the squish use case, which was like doing things like rotation. <laughs> did we build an image compressor? We did. We finally <laughs> built an image compressor, but doing things like rotation, resize, and that without experiencing main thread stuff, but generating a new fav icon, all these little things that you often want to do. Yes, and that's that's a, yeah. Like if if you're generating a notification icon. In a service worker, like I, I would, here's the two people that are a part of this chat. Yeah. Generate the icon for that. I'd like that. I worry it's niche, but then, so here's the thing: life cycles shouldn't be niche. Everyone should be doing it because yeah. everyone should enable their tab to come back to life in the same state that it, it was and in. That before. actually requires a big mentality shift because right now nobody writes apps in this way on the well, web. Well, if you do it with the URL, if all of your state is in the URL, you're fine. I guess, but, but in a lot of apps, that's hard. Like if you think about, yeah. Um, it's just a simple to-do list. You're in the process of writing a to-do. You switch tabs. It gets frozen or discarded. Nobody persists that half-written to-do to the URL bar. That's true. That's true. And you want to go back and still have your half-written to-do list there. Yeah, and, and it'll rely on something checking IDB uh, yeah. on page load, which I know GitHub does a good job of. Like, yeah. So it requires a big mentality shift, but so does moving work to a worker, as, as I have found out. It's very hard to get developers to in that mindset. So I think both of them. Because it's a pain. It is. <laughs> I'm working painful. on it, mate. I'm working on it. All right, all right. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I think we agree that life cycle is probably in overarching the mo more important problem to solve. Let's, let's, let's go with that. I'm, I'm definitely willing to go with that. Now we have life cycle APIs, our first. Second semi-finalist. Uh, first, second semi-finalist. Exactly. That, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, we're going to leave that there for this episode. Going to find our second, second semi-finalist in and our, the, second, and our winner, actually. Yes. We're going to find our second finalists. And while we're there, we may as well do the winner. I'm, I'm not ready for that. 
Um, oh, you want to say that as well? I don't know, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's gonna, <laughs> nothing's going to be linear. We really messed this one up. We're going to get it right from now on.